What is going on, guys? Joey Franzel here at Flex Training Systems. We are one, two, three weeks out from Worlds. What the heck? My flight is in less than three weeks. That's crazy to me. Uh, just trying to keep up with the, the videos once daily, once a week. Daily, once a week? What? I mean, I guess it is during the day. What am I even saying? <laughs> Sumo deadlifts, heels, cutting weight, all that stuff. We're going to get into it. Basically, the overall theme of this video is are you doing something you shouldn't be doing because it seems like the thing to do? Or should you actually be uh, you know, doing those things? For example, there's just been a lot of people uh, as of late that I've been switching off of sumo onto conventional and they've been doing great. Um, you know, sumo is a very technical thing and it does sometimes feel easier when the weights get heavy, things tend to go to shit. Uh, and you know, not everybody's going to be suited for sumo. Um, not everybody's going to be suited for heels. I don't know. Like not many people can squat ATG, you know, like to parallel basically or below parallel right parallel is not depth it's got to be below that your hip crease has to be below the top of your knee um not many people can do that naturally with weight on their back without some sort of lower backgrounding or something so in which case i could absolutely see why you would need some heels um, um but you can't just i don't think you should just start out in heels um when I was first starting out, I started out in flats, uh, but it was like very new to me squatting that low um, with that much weight. And uh, mind you, my max, I think my first meat max was like 470 something uh, as a fucking 93 as a 105 or sorry, 198 at the time. And uh, it hurt, it hurt. And then I put on heels and it felt better. Um, but then over time, I started to see some of the issues that I was having in heels. Uh, you know, if your butt is just shooting up out of the hole. Uh, also, I just felt like I was losing a lot of power. Um, and just when you think about it, like ideally everybody would squat in flats, in my opinion, like everyone that I coach, if they could hit depth, like without it being a problem. But sometimes hitting depth is a problem. So I think it might be worth giving up a little bit of power to make sure that you can even get into the meat, if that makes sense. Um, but as I, but it all comes with trial and error, right? Uh, you can't just. I think I think tons of people just see shit on the internet and they just copy it. When one, you gotta you gotta find your technique, right? Sometimes you can use other people that have like genetically just like perfect technique to help you model the way that you move, it would be more so their tempo and their cadence and their, you know, their positioning almost, but not so much like, but you, but you may not be able to, to lift like them simply because for example, if somebody locks out completely fully locked out their sumo deadlift with their arms before their hands don't even touch their thighs, right? Their hands are way, way below their thighs before they even, you know, uh, but when they lock out, right? You're not going to be able to do that, obviously, if your arms are short. So if you try to copy that, you're always going to run into the issues of having to fight through your thighs. So in that sense, you have to kind of weigh your options and see, is it worth me even doing sumo? If I'm always going to have this problem, I, you know, your grip's going to have to be extra, 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 extra strong to be able to fight through that position. There's just a lot of things that, that can happen if you try to copy someone else and you're not built like them. Um... I literally only know of like four people that exist who lock out with their hands. Basically, every pull is like a block pull and they don't run into any friction uh, with their hands hitting their legs, right? I don't know many, I literally know like a handful of people that can do that. Yet, there's tons of people that are going to try to emulate them because they're lifting so much more weight when it's the advantage of sumo, sumo delas and their leverage, which is not something like you can't. The other thing specifically is the one where, like, you can't really fix your leverage by getting strong. Like, you can build more muscle and become stronger at, during the lift 
you can always do that, right? I think muscle can trump everything to an extent. Um, but like, for example, if your ROM sucks on bench and you build, build your body up, you can kind of increase your leverage, right? You can make it better. You can decrease the distance between, uh, like your segments, if that makes sense. Whereas with, with sumo doing that is not really going to help you. It's going to work against you and you'll never be able to make your arms shorter. And because your legs are out wide, it's not like putting more meat in between like the, like your hamstrings and your calves is going to help you like it is in the squat, right? It's one of those lifts, you know, where you just either you're built for it. You got to pick, pick the one that you're built for most and then get really good at that. And then that, let that be the end of it. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that's just all goes back to finding what works for you. Uh, if you have a coach, they can help you kind of find those, uh, you know, squatting in flat, squatting in heels, pulling sumo, pulling conventional, um, wide stance squats, you know, medium stance squats, narrow stance squats, whatever, toes straight, toes out. I don't think, actually, I think far too many people have their toes straight when they should turn them out. That'll literally solve like their back rounding, uh, their hip shooting, just so many different things if, if they just turn their toes out. And again, this is something you have to find. I'll use Sean as an example. Somebody asked uh, in the comments of uh, one of his videos, his recent videos, you know, how did you find that technique? Um, I don't, I don't know anyone that would ever coach it that way. Well, one, I would disagree with that. There's a lot, I mean, I'm going to know more people than probably this random guy, but, uh, you know, you would coach it however you think is best for the lifter. But to speak on Sean's scenario, since I've been there since the beginning, took a lot of trial and error, you know, um, uh, he tried a lot of different things. Uh, and we just kind of found what worked best for him. There wasn't any, uh, like he used to pull conventional mixed squat narrow squat with a normal stance, like a medium stance on uh, bench, uh, you know, like with normal range of motion. And now literally all of that, we're, we've gotten as far away from all of that as possible and he's doing fine, but he's crazy mobile, right? He's probably one of those mobile people that he is the most mobile, like flexible person I know. And he can do that, right? I can't do that. Uh, there's no point in me even trying to do that. Uh, you guys can't see it, but I actually do have quite a big arch on bench. You could stick your whole, like you could stick your arm under me uh, and wh while I'm in my uh, bench setup or whatever. But I'm wearing a shirt and I'm wearing a belt and I'm fat right now. So it's like hard to tell, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, when I, was, when I was lighter, you know, I definitely had something like that. But I have moved my squat stance out or wider over time and my bench grip is weird. Like it was, it was mildly narrow and then it, it's never moved between ring finger and index finger. I, I usually stay within there, but it does change from time to time just depending on how big I am at the time. But, um, you know, you just got to find your technique. You got to find what works for you and like looking at other people and trying to emulate them may 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 or may not work you know there's so many different ways to find your optimal technique uh sometimes i can look at somebody's squats and i just know right away oh, okay this guy needs to be doing this or you know i might see their deadlift and they're like hey man like i know you're doing the whole sumo thing but you're like struggling to lock out 500 pounds when i'd rather pull you back down to conventional and i know that i could consistently build you up over time and have you pulling like 550 600 you know, without any technical problems. And we just, we just literally work some grip and you're fine. You know what I mean? So there's a give and take to everything, you know, for sumo, you're getting more, uh, mechanical advantage, but you're losing, you're losing stability, uh, you know, up top with lockout. Sometimes you might have issues getting the, the bar moving off the ground. There's just a lot of different things that can happen. Um, w when you lift that way, you also can lose more power, like in the hamstrings, like towards lockout. I don't know if you guys ever see people trying to lock out, uh, on sumo and like the closer they get to the top, they just kind of lose, uh, they just lose power because of how wide they are in, in the hams and glutes. Um, I think you can work it from that stance to build it up, but those issues, like if you see like a semi sumo stance, well, actually we don't really see them too much these days anymore, but, um, like that narrow stand sumo, uh, they usually don't have those, uh, problems. Um, that is another stance that I would kind of like to see 
people use. I think some people can actually be really good at it. Uh, it's just we tend to go towards an extreme, right? Very narrow, conventional, or wide sumo. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I want to say. Oh, yeah, also, don't cut. <laughs> uh, I have in my notes here, don't cut weight. Okay, so basically, there's just a like if you're 5'10, 5 5'11, 5 and you're cutting weight and you're ranked like 50 in either weight class, it makes no sense to cut. You know what I mean? Just have fun with the sport. Enjoy it for it is. Enjoy it for the social act aspect. Enjoy it for the personal growth, the journey of growing and getting stronger and just training. But like, honestly, if you're in that scenario, you know, there's no point. Like, it's just going to hold you back so much in the long term and you're probably going to be beat up a lot more. You're not going to be nearly as durable trying to stay in that lower weight class. And you're just, I feel like you're missing out on what powerlifting can really be for you by just like, and I'm not even saying getting fat. I'm just saying, don't even worry about it. Just train, you know, just cut out that big stressor and just focus on lifting. Um, you know, I can't say it enough, you know, uh, if you really want to, you could try doing a cut and if it's horrible, then, you know, you don't ever want to do that again. And it's not a fun, easy thing, you know? There are some people that do like to cut, but they're also kind of crazy. But I think not everyone is crazy and not everyone can tolerate that. You know what I mean? You got to find powerlifting can be whatever you want it to be. And I think to be the best powerlifter you can be, you need to like experience power powerlifting in a way that's going to be most beneficial for you to be successful on the platform. But yeah. Um, what else? Yeah, it's pretty much it, guys. I just wanted to touch on that. Uh, reminder, someone, many of you were asking me about my squats. Um, it's actually rather interesting. Uh, I, I just told myself that I wanted to squat 700 pounds, like, soon, because I hadn't done it. Um, uh, I thought about doing, you know, hitting 700 and then dropping some pounds, dropping some weight, and then, like, losing five pounds and then bulking back up, but then I was just like... I don't know if I want to do that anymore. You know, I'm, I'm getting really close to, like, I'm hitting numbers in the gym I haven't hit ever, so probably be best for me to just stay. But anyway, all I did to, to put up that squat was I took an extra day, took an extra day off. I had an easy squat day before that, which is my high bar day, and uh, that's literally all I did. Literally all I did, and I hit my protein. I made sure I got at least 200 to 250 grams of protein, uh, every day from when I had decided that, so it was six days in a row, um, and I slept on point, L just, just like, just recovery stuff, like normal recovery stuff, and boom, that, that 700 for two went up, and I was like rusty, I felt super rusty doing it, because uh, I didn't really complain about it too much, but I, my hamstring was weird after coming back from the Arnold, um, to the point where I had to have like two or three weeks where I just was like really doing like tempo squats uh, or just not letting myself get a true stretch reflex. Uh, and then I trained for like two weeks and then the second week I hit the 660 and I was like, all right, I'm going to, I want to put up 700 and then that that's it. That's all I did. I just paid attention to recovery. Like I didn't do anything complicated with training. I do. I've literally been doing the same training for like five years. <laughs> you know what I mean? For me. Uh, little changes here and there, like with accessories and structuring my days and things like that. But same principles, things like that. And that's it. It's pretty much all it is, guys. Like literally, if you don't get anything about what I said about sumo or heels or none of that, and all I want to say is just focus on your recovery a little bit. Um, it's going to go a long way. Like I, I feel like every time, if anybody ever has an issue getting stronger – Assuming, like, if they're with me, if they're not getting stronger, it's, like, guaranteed, like, something outside the gym, like, recovery, their their job is not allowing us to make progress because it's too demanding, you know, they, they're not sleeping, school, whatever, you know, it's very rare, like, it, it, it that's it, like, literally, you fix your recovery, training's gonna take care of everything else, let RPE do its thing, you're good to go, uh, that's all I wanted to leave you guys with. Shit, let me get a hashtag, recovery boys, in the comments down below. I'm about to go hit up some excruciatingly light high bar squats. Actually, I might do a video on that. I lift super duper light when I'm not lifting heavy. <laughs> of course, right? 
No, like I have two heavy days in the week, one for upper, one for lower, and the rest of the week I'm just like, it's like literally the rest of my week is recovery work. So uh, I think that'd be an interesting perspective to share with you guys since I don't know many people that do it that way. Um, but yeah, guys. I mean, that's for me personally. But yeah, guys, uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know down below. Appreciate you, pr appreciate each and every one of you. Sweden in freaking three weeks. And then we got the biggest, it's going to be the biggest state meet ever here in Anaheim. It's going to be nuts, fellas. It's going to be nuts. Talk to you in the next one. Peace.